I don't think he's trying to get the gold medal. Mm. But he's trying to show what he could do with Jigs. And I appreciate that. Right. Um, I think the last time I got to commentate a Hungry Box um, match was at UGC 2016. I, the crew battles. I think he played in uh, Georgia. I think they might have had a team or something. I can't, I can't remember to save my life, but um, he definitely played. I think he might have went a little bit of Wario, and he might have went Jigs as well. His Wario is really nice. Really? Yeah, his guys are, he has a really nice Wario. Okay, I'd like to see that. Hopefully he brings it out. I know he has a really nice nest, but mm -hmm. I've been seeing a lot of his Jigs. However, we have some top tiers coming on the stream right now. This might be the real game. It is Sheik versus Bayonetta. Sheik coming out from Torn from America and Handpen Bayonetta from Japan. Probably won a big tournament or two. <laughs> Just because everyone in Japan wins a big tournament, it seems like. Well, not maybe, everyone. Maybe we need to move to Japan so, so we can start winning big tournaments, man. Oh, Who yeah. Knows? Don't worry. I'm about to win this tournament. We'll, we're, we'll find out. <laughs> in the meantime. <laughs> All right. Good stuff here by Handpen. Looks oh. like he's hanging out on the top platform a bit to try to get some extra damage with neutral airs, but Sheik is taking over with these fairs. Mm -hmm. And these retreating fairs at that, too. Oh, uses the grenade. Good option coverage. Trying to take the ledge of the stage away from Bayna. As we know, she can be a terror if she gets her hands on that ledge. She's a really difficult character to deal with out there. Yeah, for sure. However, Sheik is really good at just being able to charge up needles and say, hey, you can hang out on the ledge. If you hang out there too long, I'm going to full hop needle you into bouncing fish, especially at KO percent, so you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. It seems like Handpen's actually going really aggressive now compared to in the beginning, just hanging out on that platform and just using neutral air. But going back to the platform again, let's see what he's going to do. And that's one of the great things about Bayonetta. She can like just change the pace of the match at the drop of a hat. I mean, she can do that as well, but I think Bayonetta kind of has her beat a little bit in that area. Oh, I agree. Uh, Bay Bayonetta can almost do anything. Uh, Bayonetta actually applies a lot of pressure, and I feel she normally does apply pressure, but there's a certain type of pressure that comes from Bayonetta, especially because she has witch time. She yes. can witch time you at any point in time. She can attack your shield and then witch time because she thinks you're going to try to punish her, even if you're not supposed to be able to punish her because right. she still doesn't have that much lag after attack. Mm -hmm. But Sheik, the combo she could do at lower percents, and there's actually a 50 50 that you could do on Bayonetta to get a kill at percents actually close to this where you do an up throw oh. into an up air. And I was actually really smart. You know that, that she kind of touched on that. Torn I might have been looking for that. As you see, he just went for jabs that time. Didn't want to quite finish that uh, that throw animation out. So he might be trying to edge the percent there. Oh, and then this is something that a lot of Sheiks really aren't used to. And this is what makes the matchup difficult. The fact that in any other matchup, they can pretty much come back to the stage in a comfortable fast. But versus Bayonetta, she just completely writes and rewrites the book on coming back to the stage. And good back air right there, closing out Torn's first stock. Ooh, yes, that was a good first stock coming out from Torn, or coming out from Handpen. Uh, one thing I also like to mention about how Handpen hand mashed out, a lot of Japanese players, they take heavy duty pride in mashing out fast. And one of the things I noticed about American top players, they actually don't mash out fast. Sometimes mm -hmm. they do not even mash. But the Japanese players, I stayed with them back in 2012, yes. um, in, or a couple years ago in Japan. My goodness, do they mash up fast. And that's why whenever Handpen gets grabbed, you will not see Handpen stay in there for longer than two pummels because um, they are just some of the best mashers in the world. And I feel like I actually am too, just by learning from them, practicing. Right, you know, and to kind of add to that, you know, it's not only just enough to be able to mash out, but to be able to mash out in an efficient manner. It's like that way, when you do mash, you don't like get out of the animation. You like do like a neutral air or something crazy like that. Because I got a buddy at home who's really, really good at mashing. But what he does is he just takes his control and just presses a bunch of buttons. Well, now your hand is off the controller. You know, you're just you're in a really bad position. That's very true. You can mash and get them out earlier. But it looks like Torrent's having a lot of trouble right now. 102%. That's pretty much KO percent. Yeah, Bayonetta at max rage, even beyond max rage. So one good back here near the ledge should be able to get the KO. And we know he's going to look for it. Oh, I almost thought that would be it. But it seemed like he was a bit scared of the grenade. Oh, my God. And then taking that platform away from him immediately. Throws out that upper, drawing this match close, but for how much longer? Very true, and this is a good position for Sheik. She can do a lot of combos. She does have quite a bit of rage, but if she can get a good grab with her back against the stage or towards the ledge, that would be a good position. And that might be it, but no grab coming out, actually, coming from Torn. And a lot of pressure coming out from Hanpen. Oh, oh, here we go. And Hanpen looks like he was looking for some sort of covers right there, understanding that he was probably going to jump, jump back onto the stage, excuse me, and throw out a forward air. Okay. okay, there's a Witch Twist. Good maneuverability. All right, a lot of dive kicks. He might be looking for the dive kick into side B, into, oh, oh, here we go, into up air. Okay. All right, not exactly a dive kick, but that's definitely what he's looking for, getting that side B to start up, and it pushes the opponent to being, like, right above you, where you can do an up air, back air, forward to a couple of moves. You know, and it also doesn't help that 
you know, Sheik is a very easy character to combo. I, I think Bayonetta obviously has the ability to combo just about anything that moves in this game. But the fact that Sheik is just that much easier for her really makes her struggle in this matchup. Oh, I agree. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing where I feel like she can do well, um, but the cheeks that do do well, they are really good at getting early percent uh, KOs, and they're really good with their combos. So I feel like Corrin will have to step that up a little bit, get these combos started, look for these grabs a little bit more. But it is hard to grab Bayonetta. She's always flying in the air, jumping around. It's actually like you're fighting Jigglypuff, but you know, better, way better though. Fifty times better. Fifty. <laughs> Fifty might be a stretch, but yeah. definitely way better. So <laughs> let's see if Corrin can switch it up this time around. Get these KOs a little earlier. He yep. had a great start. They were at the sa almost the same percent. Like, I'm, I'm just a little shocked. Yeah, you know, that last match, they, they respected each other a lot, that first stock. But I think one, once the stock started to fly is when crunch time came out. And then that's when they knew that I need to kick up the Jets. Here we okay. go. Gets the sliding hill kick. Trying to find an opening here. Here's a which switch right to an afterburner kick. Okay, very tried and true Bayonetta combos. Oh! Wow. I mean, he didn't even go for the grab. He went for the F, so he's like, I know this combo will work. Mm -hmm. All right, good stuff by Corn. He does have the percent lead, because keep him fine when they do bats with him. You still take damage, so it's not something completely bad where you're like, oh, wow, I didn't hit him. Actually, you kind of did hit you him. You kind of did. Yeah, you gave him some percent, so it's still okay. Mm -hmm. And 84, okay. It seems a lot better for Corn this time around. He's playing it really patient. Yeah, you know, using the positioning of the stage and how big it is to his advantage, you know, using those needles and really keeping Bayonetta at bay and making it so that you... You kind of dictate when she comes in. Oh, yes. That's how you want to play this matchup. Make it out when she comes in or control what the other person is doing. And a lot of characters seem to have trouble with that. She, I feel, is definitely one of the better ones because she is like, okay, I don't care. I'll wait. Mm -hmm. I'll sit here. I'll get this grab. You're going to you're gonna jump on this stage eventually. You're going to jump off that platform, and I will get that grab. Oh. But a witch time. Okay, he's going to go just for an up air. Just a little bit too high for him to get back down to center stage and throw an up smash. I know that that's, that was something I might have been on the back of his head. Oh, my God. Wow, that was uh, full hop needles. Uh, it was needles into bouncing fish, but he delayed the bouncing fish a little bit, so he wasn't able to get the combo. The needles might have hit him too far away for him to get the bouncing fish too right. fast. Now, despite this wonderful start that Torn has, it looks like Anfin has been able to bring this one back. All right, but he's looking for that 50-50, hoping that he would actually not air dodge, but both times he was actually able to air dodge. And here we go again. Okay, goes for the vanish that time and does it away. That's very smart. Yeah, he was actually able to get away even after he missed the vanish. Let's see if we can still get a KO. It's 132%. And no SD. Fantastic. Ban that is SD so much. Especially, uh, I believe, Salem. But here we go. Okay, really looking for something here. And uh, Hanpin, every time he gets Torn on that top platform, you see the up tilt start to come out because it looks like Torn has this weird habit of rolling when he gets caught up. Oh, my God. And so I think up tilt is a very strong combo starter for Bayonetta. I mean, I, I, we've seen it happen time and time again. Oh, yes. Up tilt is a really good combo starter. Um, definitely gets things started at the beginning. Actually can get KOs too. Up tilt into up air, for example. Usually Bayos go for down tilt, but it still works out. And let's see how this Bayos is going to go for the KO. We might see some spam back airs, and there goes one already. Oh, gets the first hit of forward smash. Tries to catch an air dodge with the, or excuse me, forward air, but then tried to catch an air dodge with the forward smash. Not quite that time, but again, very reminiscent of what we've seen in that last game. Up air closing out that stock. All right, well, good stuff to him, Pen. Actually doing a great job making sure to get the KO. Every time it seems like Sheik's at 120, he gets a KO. He's like, all right, I'm going to up B. I'm going to side B into KO every time. He's right. really clean at getting the KO confirmed once he starts the combo. Right. Because it's not about how you start. It's about how you finish with this character. All right, that's one of the best jabs in the game. That full jab attack, it almost feels like it sucks you in, like you could knock it out. So good stuff for him going for that. Similar to Foxes, a lot of Foxes, they will just full jab combo. It looks silly, it looks noobish, but it's a really good attack. Yeah, you know, always been a big fan of her uh, jab combo because, you know, I, I do play Bayonetta, you know, outside of Smash as well. But in a Little Mac, I remember in early Smash 4, he had a really good jab combo as well, too. Oh, man. Okay, nothing happening too much at the ledge. The percent is pretty much even right about now, but Sheik has to be very careful to not get caught. Like right there, he went for, I believe, a forward throw into fair or down throw to fair. Scary. Ooh, and I thought that was actually a good choice. That was actually just go for the up smash. You need that KO right now. Okay, yeah. 79%. Oh, okay. oh my goodness. And then she is just sharking for her off stays, trying to hold out that neutral air for dear life as she tries to take that stock away here from Torn. But Torn, we're starting to see this micro spacing come out. We didn't quite see a lot of crawling in the first match. Oh! 
but we started to see it in this one here. He actually got the 50-50 right there and did the up air. Bayonetta did not air dodge, however, it still didn't matter. And that forward throw is not going to KO just yet, but this is really high percent. Watch out for those bullets. That can actually KO you still. Yes, the bullet climb max, a very, very strong tool. Okay, here's some needles. She has some neutral specials coming out of her own here. Tries to go for the four till right into the combo. Gets the grab, but a little out of a percentage there to go for the 50-50 that time. All right, he's still doing really well with the needles. That's one of the things you want to do with Sheik. You have to pressure with needles and just run in and get that grab. But that down air, that can actually KO at this percent too. So good thing they actually traded a bit. Oh, okay. Try to go for afterburner kick right into the up air, but the forward throw is actually going to Close it out. Wow, good stuff by Handpen. Seeing how the percent was, he saw it was really high. He decided, hey, I can get that run-up forward throw. Got the run-up forward throw and won this set 2-0. However, that was still a good set, and it seems like they might be giving each other advice. And I like to see that. I like to see that. A lot of times I see top players, they'll give advice to someone after they lose, saying, hey, you know, when I do the forward throw, you might need a DI in. He definitely knows that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, look at that. It looks so friendly. Yeah. You can't even tell who lost. Smash community, man. That's, yes. just, that's just love right there. And, you know, I, I kind of want to talk about Torrin just a little bit. There are a few opportunities where it kind of looked like he might have been able to close it out, that he might have flubbed a little bit. I think most notably looking back at that last match, that up air that uh, Hanpin kind of fell out of. I know that he was really kicking himself about that. But just shortly before that, it looked like he found a needles into what looked to be almost a bouncing fish conversion that he ended up – 